Okay, so how verb logistics involves all the activities that involve the outflow of products from an organization. Mind you, the Busian is a Maweya, not the Woody. This one that involves the inflow of materials, about the outflow of products. It's like our own material, other way are available that are transformed into a product. So, she just made it to the time when I'm done, my delivery boy is now in a more modest year. If it is to do with a product, it may happen to a guy that is a part of outbound, which is it seems. So, uh, I wish I would have demonstrated something here. Let me put that on here, but we'll see. Are you both able to see here, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is our organization, and we are saying here we have uh, suppliers, and here we have uh, customers. In this case, I'm a distributor of oil, right? Then, the Jamila in the He fell as a producer, he did a part of that company, he might have produced it. Now, what happens is that. Uh, we have ordered probably the materials from the outside. Uh, the materials are coming in here. And I think I figure that the warehouse only now when you can want to mobilize the money the warehouse as well. What happens? Uh, materials are in the way The kind of logistics that is that information is in the way of the other. Then the two million euros on the transport was that you have a member. Even in one figure, I'm not even a song, I'm a figure of factory. Come on, until Maria, whatever is happening in this side is inbound to this. Those are not all about the West. Can you imagine what you have to have? We saw the warehouse in a minute, and I want to know my fish products, and these are the products. What is that way you are? From here, can you just make a visit for my customer? I'm not even a song, what is it? Whatever is happening from here, going this side is part of outbound logistics, eh? that's what we are saying. But, within this organization, because it is really like that, she will not have to be able to produce this thing. So, within this one, we have to have to be able 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 to Zodiac are outbound, the main bound or outbound. This one has a larger scope, larger than the scope of uh, production logistics. We are very that one. Why am I saying this one has a larger scope? It has a larger scope because Tigawe and Anna Tizenge that the outbound, the highest Tigawe it is. You find that not outbound, I'm saying both uh, production logistics. At the same time, outbound, I'm going to say both. Uh, what we call retail logistics, the way outbound, the way I'm also involved in uh, marketing logistics. So it's like, you can go to outbound logistics, this one has a larger scope, larger than this, this one, production logistics. A larger scope than the retail logistics. A larger scope than the marketing logistics. We're better than that one, eh? Please. Yeah. We're better, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let us proceed and uh, see something else.
I changed here. The actual movement of whatever is happening here is part of logistics, and this logistics is reverse logistics. Now, uh, in supply chain, reverse logistics is considered as a, an expense. So, this one can be an expense to you as a, a supplier, in this case, or even the customer, depending on the arrangement of your contract, depending on the terms and conditions of uh, your contract. You can have a term that say, in case of anything, uh, in case of reverse logistics, we as a supplier, we are going to uh, to foot the bills. That can be an agreement in the contract. It is possible. There can be an agreement that in case of a return or in case of a reverse logistics, it is you, the, uh, the customer, who is going to foot the bills. So it depends on the agreement terms and conditions in your contract. But in either case, there are always uh, reverse logistics is an expense because it comes with uh, some unnecessary costs. That's why it is always advisable uh, for producers or uh, players in the supply chain to make sure that they minimize uh, the cases that lead into returns. So when it comes to, let's say, order processing, they have to make sure that there is utmost accuracy so that when the goods have been uh, sent for delivery or have been delivered, they should not be returned due to uh, inaccurate order processing. We get that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one reason through which we can minimize the returns and probably minimize the expenses that are associated with reverse logistics is to make sure that uh, the order processing is done as accurate as possible. Accuracy must be in there. The second uh, way through which we can minimize uh, the cost that are associated with reverse logistics is to make sure that we minimize damages as possible, as much as possible. We can minimize damages by a manner of enhancing quality control in our production uh, processes. And where are you behind that? Um, I'm just writing to the Okay, yes. The way in which we minimize or we can minimize uh, the cost that are associated with uh, logistics, reverse logistics. Mm -hmm. So, one way we are saying reducing the damages or minimizing the damages. So, we can minimize the damages by ensuring that uh, the quality uh, control, uh, or by ensuring quality control or the quality standards mm -hmm. or quality assurance must always be there. Because if you enhance your quality standards. You make sure that whatever is going out of your factory to the customer, as it is in good condition and the quality is up to the standards, that you give the customer no reason to reject your product. Mm -hmm. So another way is to make sure that uh, the handling of the uh, the deliveries or the deliveries are being handled in an efficient and effective manner to avoid, of course, the, the damages that we are talking about here. So, the damages, mind you, can happen while we factor one or more, or else can happen in transit while on the way for delivery. So, while uh, you are trying to deliver the goods, make sure that the goods are being handled in, uh, in a proper manner to avoid or to minimize the damages. So, by doing that, uh, at least you minimize those costs. Because those, those costs, they always have a bearing on uh, your business operations. When you produce something, mind you, you have what we call cost of production. Now, the cost of production, when you add a markup, is when now you say, this will be my profit. Then you set the price. And then you know that this is my profit. My profit is so much percentage. Now, when we add the costs that are uh, coming from reverse logistics, definitely what is happening there is you are minimizing probably your profit margins. And if you are not careful, you can even run uh, towards a loss. Why? Because these were not uh, anticipated uh, costs that you are now incurring here due to this reverse logistics. Uh, 
Let us look at something else. Yeah, okay, so just take him. Okay, just take him. Protection. Yeah. 
interest. So, why is that these locals are finding it difficult to operate? Yet others in Tanzania are operating. It is because those ones probably they have an upper hand in one way or the other. They are stronger than this one. But since it is a globalized business environment, these people are able to come in here and do business. If you human you can also go and do business that side because they are in a globalized economy. But if you are weaker, you have weaker muscles, it becomes normally difficult for you to compete with this one. So that is another challenge. So the challenge that these people, uh, robot transporters, are uh, mentioning here are citing is to do with globalization that allows any other person to do business uh, elsewhere. Yes, on the same, uh, with the coming of technology, things are done easier. But technologies are also very expensive. Expensive to, uh, to, uh, to initiate at the same time expensive also to maintain. So, um, these are some of the uh, challenges associated with uh, this kind of uh, sector, that is logistics. What are some of the uh, external factors that we can suggest we can think of? Sure, of course, there are not only the technology, globalization, and competition, there are numerous others. Let's try to come up with uh, some others, if at all we can. Or licensing, regulations, and everything, right? So licensing can also be regarded as one of those uh, challenges. You need to go through all those processes in order for you to be accepted. Numerous licensing processes that are always difficult to, uh, for you to 
go by and fulfill. Just as he says that uh, there are a number of requirements for you to get right things. So it is always difficult and challenging to get those uh, requirements. So that is the challenge of it. For example, uh, there is a uh, if you want to export, for example, agro produce in Malawi here, you need some licensing, isn't it? You need to do some licensing. You cannot just produce things just like that. But to get the licensing is not that simple and easy. It involves a lot of things. So while we can say the licensing is good, but the processes that are involved for you to get the license, or else the uh, requirements that uh, you are supposed to meet are just too numerous. And because of that, it becomes a, a challenge. So for the licensing, it becomes a challenge. That you love know. What else do you think that be an external challenge apart from licensing? Apart from globalization of operation technology. Yeah, but just explain, I don't know if it's there, but there is that thing I'm having border control. I don't know if can you can be good. I have border control. Is yeah. she yeah. something on Like how other borders they are like they have their own mm -hmm. like restrictions. Let's say I'm having a country where nothing about border, Arab and and I feel like maybe that could be an issue in terms of delivery time because of like processing of Paperweight, mm -hmm. that, that, that. Okay, so an issue to do with uh, regulation, right? Yeah. Regulations, uh, bureaucracy, and all those things. Yeah. Whereby you have one of those numerous processes. That can also be considered as a challenge, uh, as I this one. And uh, there can also be some political factors yeah. that can also be regarded as uh, uh, challenges affecting this kind of an industry. Mm -hmm. uh, so government regulations, the ones that I mentioned are part of government regulations. Yeah. And these government regulations, yes. Am I? Am I? I'm dealing with all those ones. So, uh, those such kind of regulations, they pose an threat and a challenge. Yeah. And uh, for those that are in protesting, if you challenge them, you talk to them, they will tell you a number of those study stories eh, that are associated with their business. But at times you admire them when you see them with their trust and everything, so they are on a good one, but those people they face are a number of challenges. Some of them are the ones that you are mentioning. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, there are some political issues we have uh, mentioned, we have mentioned them rather. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, social unrest. Social unrest is, uh, some of the, uh, is one of those challenges. So, uh, when we say social unrest, these are some situations where probably local populations or some populations in a certain uh, area where you are probably traveling to, you are traveling to, probably they are protesting, they are demonstrating, uh, they are rioting, that is social unrest. Those people are demonstrating due to some other reasons affecting their lives. And at the time they can affect the operations, logistics operations. A good example is what has been happening in South Africa uh, over the years. We always hear stories of uh, trucks being attacked, other things based around uh, the drivers being attacked, etc. etc. We hear this one. Normally, it happens when uh, there are some, some, uh, some unrest that side. That side people, they always, whenever they have issues, they always take to the streets. And they are always very violent. Whenever they say, we want to do this, and we don't want to see anybody doing opposite of what we want to do. If you do the opposite, the consequences are always dire, are always very serious. So we have always heard of stories trying to be attacked. And the third one has uh, eventually it is leading to some serious problems when it comes to the economy, South African economy. What is happening now? Uh, a number of transporters from different countries, not only in Malawi, are now shunning the ports of, uh, they say, Debe, potentially the wider of those ports that are in South Africa are shunning them. Others are opting for. Uh, Namibia here, there is a window. Uh, what? This a putting uh, in Namibia, we put what? Boil space. They put boil space. Yes. Then others in Angola, and of course, there is some even Mozambique here. Why are they doing this? It is because whenever they deploy their trucks to Mexico, Delta, or those other ports in South Africa, security is not guaranteed in that side. Because whenever they are in, they are likely going to lose their truck. They are likely going to be to lose their truck drivers to lose the goods themselves that they were uh, transporting. So, those are here at risk. Now, most of the uh, transporters are saying, you know, if it is to go and get your stuff in Denver, we are not going. At least if you tell us to go to Bayer or something or elsewhere.
So this one, by and by, is affecting the economy of South Africa in terms of revenue. Because by using their post, it means uh, those using the post are uh, leaving money there because they pay. Now, if people are shining those posts, they say no, we fly elsewhere, it means they will be suffering by and by. So that is uh, a result of social unrest. There can also be another environmental, uh, anyway, another external factor, and that is uh, uh, environmental factors. External challenge, that is environmental uh, factors. Outside, even from Mozambique, 
even from Zambia, Tanzania they don't know. We don't have to talk about Tanzania. Most of the things they call it from Tanzania. So after we don't have position. So the legal policy we have, we are still uh, externalizing in the name of importing consumer goods and consuming. Because unfortunately we can't even produce our own to feed ourselves. So at least if we were consuming, we are producing just to consume ourselves. Chapman's export is on the scene, I'm not even to one day. She just said, talk about that. The rate at which we externalize the forest will be reduced to a certain extent. At the same time, if we were able to um, export, then that would be much better for us. So, last of the question, the issue of forest is a bigger problem that is uh, not easy to solve as we stand right now. Of course, the solutions are there, but not straightforward as it is. Of course, uh, there are no calls for what we call the dollarization. Maybe you might have heard of this one. Some countries are discussing on ways through which we can overthrow the dollar, the dollar dependence. Yeah. Because the dollar is an international currency. We saw what we have in the country. The shortage of that one is affecting us in one way or the other. So we cannot buy things outside because we do not have the what? We do not have the dollar. Now some countries are saying, why can't we uh, overthrow this uh, currency? So that we should be using our own currency, or probably a regional currency. We have a regional currency other than the dollar. In this way, probably we can reduce our dependency on the foreign currency. For example, if Malawi and Zambia can agree that okay, this is going to be a certain power. Can Zambia and Malawi, can Malawi, it will be easier for us. Yes, this is a full of operations for South Africa. Can this be a full of for me? Command Zambia will be easier for us. So, how is this possible? Can you use dollars? Uh, US dollars. Yes. Well, well, well. Um, in the local economy, in the local economy, mm. they are using their own local currency. That is the Kenya chair. Yes. Right. Yes. But now, when you go external, mm. we use the US dollar. Even ourselves, local, local, in our local economy, we use money. Mm. But if, when you go external, you go elsewhere to buy things uh, somewhere else, you have to use dollars. So, yeah. that's exactly what Kenya is doing, what that is doing, and all these other kind. So this one is working to our disadvantage. That's why right now we have uh, a, a, a summit that will be happening in South Africa. I think I'm going to say they're going to BRICS summit. BRICS is a community of countries, but Brazil, Nigeria, Nigeria is not yet there. Right? Not yet there. In Africa here we only have South Africa. Yeah. So we have Brazil, Russia, India, uh, China, China, and South Africa. But of course, Nigeria is trying to be doing, of course, Kenya is trying to be doing more so. So, these countries are meeting in South Africa, I think, next month. One of the things on the agenda of uh, their meeting is to discuss ways through which we can uh, dethrone the dollar, or we can overthrow it. Why the dollar is still the same time? Because it's a big You see? So, that's one thing that they're trying to discuss and figure out if at all we can do this. Because it's more than a dollar, that's what it's like. So, uh, when it comes to that one, that is uh, another bigger problem, <laughs> issue <laughs> of uh, forestry and all this. GDP, that's bad, you must have a car. So, another external problem that uh, is associated with this logistics is uh, uh, security threats. Security Yeah, security threats. So, uh, when it comes to security threats, uh, when we, last time when we were discussing uh, this logistics as a function, we said one of the core functions in within this one, or the backbone of our logistics, we said was what? We said transportation, right? So, it means when it comes to logistics, it involves a lot of movement from here to here. So, along the way, during this movement, that's where the security threats are always at their zenith. We have heard of stories where uh, the ships are being attacked at sea, right? Mm -hmm. The pirates, um, the transporters are being attacked, even using whatever mode of transportation, even the trains being attacked, and so on and so forth. So, these are some of the challenges. Now, uh, maritime transportation or sea transportation, which accounts to over 90% of global trade is the one that is 
are highly affected by this incentive threat. These other modes of transportation fine and good, they are also affected by but the sea transportation, the one that is highly uh, affected. Why? Because it is prone to those attackers or to those attacks so uh, so to say. So the attackers they find it easy to go and cause attack those ones. However, uh, the security measures are always being put in place, but of course they are costly and very expensive. So that one affects the profitability of those involved in sea transportation or maritime transportation to ensure that it is a safety. So that is like another challenge that is affecting this kind of uh, uh, industry logistics that is. Now, um, whoever is involved in uh, logistics activities, having seen these uh, challenges, say you are somebody who is intending to launch yourself into this business, you want to become a logistics, whatever. Way. Now you have had these challenges, you have seen these challenges. Mm -hmm. What are you supposed to do? Will you avoid all your ideas and your dreams of doing this, or else what are you going to do? What you need to do is now to take risky management measures, or to put risk man management measures in place. So, most of the challenges that we are seeing here, they always have measures that through which they can be countered or controlled or managed. The challenge that we see here, they are always measures through which they can be countered, avoided, prevented or managed. So when it comes to managing such kind of challenges or managing risks, you manage something that is already there. When you say managing something, you manage something that is that has happened already. You, have it. you cannot prevent it, but it has happened. Now, how do you deal with it? How do you deal with the impact of it? So, probably next time we shall look at uh, the how to uh, manage the risk uh, in situations like the one that we have seen here. Uh, in the face of uh, logistics challenges, how do we manage such kind of challenges? Then, the risk management of those challenges. Probably next time. We shall have to talk about this one. <coughs> For now, uh -huh. oh yes, uh, the assignment. Of course, some of the instructions are there. And uh, of course, we talk about, are you on that uh, on the person? Yes, I'm going. Oh yeah, yeah. Go to the person and just read out some of the instructions that are there. Then I want to start. Question. Write a note on the term written logistics and how it was uh, and how it was impacted by COVID-19. Okay, yeah, anyway. So what the instructions? Uh, general instructions. The minimum of three pages. Okay. Use times Roman font. Okay, so we used to that one. We are saying minimum of uh, four pages. Uh, three pages, right? Yes. At least we are talking about the content. Okay. At least the content. Yes. Minus the, the minus, minus, cover page. minus the cover page. Minus the cover page and of course the last page where you okay. put the references and all. So at least, at least those ones. Because there are some people who always, when you say at least three pages, they will count the cover page, the reference page, and in between here they just write one page. So it doesn't look good actually. So that's one thing. Then the font size is that one, and four. You type at least a uh, time normal. What else is there? Land spacing must be 1.5. Perfect for network. What else? Uh, cover page, indicator list, three references, and be four. Three. Three. It can be four or five or six, but that is the three of them to show where you are putting the information that you've written there. Yes, so, uh, another thing that we also look for is uh, um, uniformity of the. Okay, the uniformity of the font and font size. Font type or font size will always automatically be ensured if you are following that instruction. You understand? If you are following that instruction, definitely there will be uniformity in terms of the font size and the font type. But 
If you object, uh, that one will go copy and paste in. That will be formulated in the longer period. So, uh, another thing we look for is the justification. When you write your document, at least try to justify it. We know how to justify it. Right? Uh, like, uh, how you arrange your document. This is a page, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you write yourself here. Thank mm -hmm. you. 